Hello and welcome my friends, we are here with T1 or somewhere live, let's get right in the pig man because uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday we had a bit of a banger, just a just a slight banger when Gen G faced off against DK. Let's just hope that we get like just a bit, just a tiny bit of that in our series today. The Nats is Garen mid, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean Faker has played Garen uh, historically here and there, not mid lane. Uh, well, at least not on pro play, but uh, like we can never uh, count that out. Anyway, we have a lot of Shuriman bans. Lilia as well against Owner. Faker, first rotation picking the LeBlanc. Wait a sec. <laughs> it's already a good start. Hope you grabbed yourself a drink or whatever else, because this could be a long one. But, I mean, personally, I just take the 3 or 41. Not jinxing it, but uh, let's just let's just enjoy. Uh, Maokai being banned, that's great, man. That champion in the jungle is just so strong. Uh, Zix coming through. Um, yeah, I was quite mad yesterday uh, seeing what the hell DK's coaching stuff was doing. Right, you can leave Zix open once and then try try to play against it. But, I mean, go goddamn, man. Just leaving Zix open three times in a row against Pace against Genji, giving them an extra teleport, right? A team that's already so good with map movements, giving them extra teleport. Zix that can already delete waves, not only with his ult, but also his normal wave clear. Like that champion is just... Uh, oh, and I forgot the most important thing, his W, right? Where in a lane swap meta, champions like Tristana and Zix historically have already been like insane in that format because they cheat the rules of the lane swap. They buy so much time, so much tempo is being generated by them. And again, Zix also has the extra teleport from bot lane. It's just crazy that uh, this gets through like three times in a row. Let's hope T1 either can destroy him and like maybe force Viper to play something else or that we just ban him in game number two, three, four. Regardless, so far we see uh, obviously a bit of an interesting pivot here by T1. Like, it's like obviously we're setting up for Zeus counter pick. That's like okay, sure. But like blind picking mid lane, blind picking bot lane, and like Ash. Sure, Ash is a champion that Guma likes quite a lot. You know how I feel about like AD carry Ash. But um, Ash Braum, you're just setting yourself up for for struggle. Sure, Cassante and Rel are interesting bands, right? Kind of like the strongest classical top laner. And what the hell? No, 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 no. What? Blind? Like, what? You set all of this up to blind cannon then in the end? What? Okay, hook champion here. Interesting idea. I, I don't know about Braum and cannon. Like, sure, if you like ult, then cannon can't immediately ult, but uh, it's still weird. He can ult before the hook connects. So, hooking cannon is. Against good players, not the greatest idea. Okay, delights Rakan, that's quite something. Vladimir. So this could actually be Vladimir bot lane because when you remember all these years ago, that's something that Viper played. Uh, and like Vladimir top lane versus Cannon. I don't know, I mean, I'm not too familiar. I've not seen Vladimir in top lane in a long time. I just, I don't know. Uh, wild picks on Hunger Life side and T1 is just wild as well because what the hell is this draft? It's like, what is the pick order? Like, what is any of that? Let's just, uh, I mean, we have mad comfort, right? It's like, Guma wants to play Ash. He likes playing Ash, it feels like. LeBlanc for Faker, it's like, do we have to say anything more? It's like the original Demon King champion, kinda. But, mm, with that, I guess. And then owner, he literally has a skin, he will be able to play his skin. 16? Yeah, 16 is the patch where the skin was, right? Uh, and then cannon, I mean, it's like the Zeus lightning thing. So already, it's like we have what we want. Uh, not maybe the strongest champions in the current meta, but let's ignore that. Let's get into the game and let's hopefully just beat them uh, with comfort and uh, good feelings, I guess. <laughs> T1 fighting, let's go my friends. And let's crack open a cold one. Obviously again, not alcohol, don't don't be silly. 
Uh, and uh, it actually seems that Doran is playing um, the Vladimir, sustaining against the cannon, right? Obviously, uh, cannon is a bit of a flex for Zeus, right? He has the PTA, uh, press the attack. So it could actually be like a full AD cannon, which obviously, well, helps Faker, I guess, kinda. And, uh, but with all this DC our bot side has, uh, like forcing mercs, uh, giving mercs more value. So actually AD cannon might not be too bad, like compositional wise. But uh, let's just shut up and let's see. We see the extra teleport again on the Ziggs. Let's just hope we have no lane swap. I mean, that's what T1 like, kind of did with the invade and so on and so on. Like not only covering peanuts uh, like clear to be a sure that he's not impacting any lanes uh, in a cringe uh, manner, but also to guarantee that we get the standard lane matchups, which like honestly for Angwa Life, they, they, we blind picked our, uh, like everything. So they should be comfortable with their picks uh, against ours in the laning phase. Yup, yup, yup exhaust for the trade but uh, obviously HP trade for us uh, pretty aggressive play by uh, by carrier here and who he's playing the chroma version of his own skin okay so uh, he prefers that one I assume but uh, yeah good luck good fortune for owner very nice overall laning phase right going all right if you look slightly ahead right uh, owner with a like faster clear and coming faster back into the map. Maybe we see a setup here. Okay. And oh. Oh my god, the W shield is cringe. I mean, it's a flash trade, so it's not the worst thing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not the worst thing. Uh, it will enable the uh, dragon, but. Uh, We'll just have to hope that Faker can make uh, use of this uh, advantage that this uh, allows him. But uh, yeah, Yon is yeah surprisingly sturdy in uh, the laning phase. Fucking annoying. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, they pick up the first dragon. Pretty helpful for them, right? Helps them with more sustain in the learning phase. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're doing the grubbers now. AD carry stay in bot. Just supports are rotating over. Baker here gets an exhaust and a flash. <laughs> Not sure if the light actually had to do that. I mean, sure the chain would have connected, but there was not that much immediate follow-up, right? Owner was not right there. He was still finishing up the grubbers, and I mean carrier is not going to one-shot him. Anyway, we take we take three summoner spells. So far, so good. They carry top laners, obviously. Um just uh, not in the greatest of spots right now. You just swap them away and uh, yeah, you get the Dove under turret 20 times. Uh, you don't even have to be a, a carried. Oh, owner with the repeat gank gets the old. There's the chains, but Peanut flashes in. Owner doesn't, yeah. It's just cringe. Ah, oh, come on. I mean, we're getting some of this, but wait a second. Oh, come on! It's like absolutely blah, blah, blah. What the hell? We make plays, they get first blood. This is just. Ay, ay, ay. We're letting them know. We're letting them know. We're letting them know. It's all about uh, the message and so on and so on. Sure, Hunger Life, like, first in, like, so many, like, stats. Owner doesn't get the greatest kick, which is one of the bigger problems. And then. Yeah, he's a sitting duck once Peanut arrives. Carrier just a moment too late. I mean, er way earlier than the light, but uh, can't match the jungler timing. Ash also in mid lane now. Let's just see. Zeka face checks. Again, he ults out. Again, he gets the nut. It's, it's just fucking cringe. It's like, hi, uh, man. It's, what? Like, Ash ult used, owner's kick used, and nothing happens. Oh, come on. Okay, we're trading grubs for drakes, which, like, I think that's absolutely fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, uh, wait a moment. They're already coming over. But they should be delayed. We should be able to get away. This is just Doran. This is an early game. Vladimir, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, carry opens the door, ults for safety, and then that's all right. 
Well, we'll have to be careful, right? Zeus has itemized heavily for magic resistance, right? For the 1v1 against Doran. And sure, Zeka is like doing some magic damage, but, uh, well, right? So uh, we'll have to see, we'll have to see how uh, the uh, how are we are going to uh, like swap our lanes, right? Because Zeka on top, Vladimir in bot lane, and then Zix like auto clearing against LeBlanc. That's not really where we want to be. I mean, overall, this is not the game state where we want to be at, right? Okay, there's the TP. Wait, that was Zeus TP. Okay, TP for TP. And yeah, now top lane is GG. It's like, what are we doing? What? Why are we TPing away from a Zix lane? Okay. Like I should be able to get that one, right? 100%. And oh, Ash Arrow again goes into Narnia. Oh no, man, Peanut man, stop playing so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like casters. We know, we know that T1 should have gotten ahead early with their comp. But did you see these ganks? It was absolute bullshit. Nothing worked out. Ulting the wave. Turret's still not dead. And yeah, Zeka is full build. Yes, is Blade of the Rune King and. Yeah, Faker is not doing too much there anymore. He already was a tank. Uh, can can we cope with anything? I mean, maybe their Baron damage isn't the best. Uh, but their Baron setup is can be quite nasty, right? Because like the zoning of Zix, the turn of Peanut, and the light. Uh, and sure, we have like Cannon, who obviously is pretty nasty uh, to throw himself into the opponents when they do Baron, but uh, like it's not an AP cannon, so it's not the same. It's just like as if you would TP an AD carry into the enemy team. It's like they have so much safety, right? It's like Viper clears waves from like two screens away. Zeka is like a full tank. Doran has W and Flash and everything, right? It's like, hiya, man. We're two drakes ahead, or like two drakes for one ahead, right? With uh, Mountain Soul, quite okay. But honestly, if Hangwa Life gets like any Mountain Drakes, like it's it's fucking like doomed. Oh, wait, Faker, what? I mean, I guess going under. Oh, and finally an Ash Arrow connects, let's go! Uh, But the light is also there, it's just unfair. I mean, it's 3v2. Uh, Cannon takes a turret on top, so that's at least something. Owner should be able to hold this, I think. Right, Zeka has no ult. What? How much damage is that? He just has one item. But now let's just see. Okay, next objective is up. Looking at cooldowns. Um, everything is up. Besides, obviously, some flashes and so on. Uh, but yeah. Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. We can't give them free entrance into for river. Oi, 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 oi. We, we can't allow that. If they have like established like positional control, we are just cucked. Look at our engage, exactly. And they have poke and we don't. So, I mean, in the end, we have owner, right? Oh my god, we are the ones getting Wombo combo to absolute... What is Zeus doing? Okay, Faker picks it up. What the fuck? That one engage was so fast, I, I just barely saw it. That was such an insane Wombo combo. They pressed all their buttons onto us and we just died. And we didn't get the dragon, right? Somehow uh, Viper picked up the dragons, like what the hell? And now, I mean, I guess now it's game over, right? Their comp scales better than ours. Uh, their side laners will outscale ours. Uh, and I don't know what we do against, like... Ash Arrow! I mean, it's stun peanut. Would have been nice, but yeah. Let's just see this again. So peanut goes in and already CCs too. And then Zeka follows up with an easy one too. The light also on top of that, just throw in the damage from yeah, ay ah, yeah, yeah. That was just ah, that was just so much. Jesus, we got fucking cooked there. We just got more than cooked. We got burned. Can't even recognize us anymore. 
glad we can respawn and uh, yeah, refresh our faces. Yeah. Oh, he presses W. What? What? They counter our champions when we blind pick everything? What? How could that happen? It's so silly, man. It's so silly. It's like not only do we live, uh, like leave six and so on open. Oh god, no, 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 not my Guma, I need him! And he's dead. They just press the buttons at him and he just dies. And yeah, nice. Nice. Uh, oh, magic resist. Yeah, Merc Treads. Mmm, yeah, mmm, yes. Very, very, very nice uh, peanut. It just has Merc Treads and a bunch of HP. And, well, it just doesn't die. Very great. Uh, yeah, obviously, gameplay was rough, right? I think we could have easily, uh, like, if we played this game out, like, five more times, I think our early game, like, could be quite a bit better. And then we get some kills, LeBronk is more ahead, Lee Sin is more ahead, and we can leverage that. So we hopefully get a kill here. Wait, wh what? Why were there no Brom stacks on him? I don't even know what to talk about anymore, because now we have, like, just we just wait till they, uh, like, get the next Dragon, get the next Baron, then they push our base. Uh, Viper auto Ws the turret, it dies, and... Uh, Maybe they press R on uh, Guma again, and Guma dies. Yeah. Well, how could that happen to us, right? We just blind picked Ash LeBlanc in first rotation. Hmm. Weird. Well, we pick up turret here with uh, turret bounty, but we share it on three people. Doran trolls, so we get an extra kill. Um, actually, that's quite huge. Faker here flashes, but uh, yeah, I mean. This uh, Zeka guy just doesn't even get damage. Look, he's, he tanks turret and everything, but he's half HP and now he heals off the minion wave. Faker, I think he didn't even proc the... Oh fuck, what's the item's name? Uh, this like AD carry Sterax item, you know what I mean. Ash Arrow was on point, by the way. Uh, would have hit if he was still alive. Top lane, bot lane, they picked lane neutralizing picks in our blind picks or whatever for what okay, can, actually can someone tell me why the hell do we blind, like we set up our entire draft so that we can blind uh counter pick top lane and then we blind pick cannon they pick a lane neutralizer into cannon and uh like honestly this is fine he should be able to get the turret yeah this uh, this is actually all, all right uh, in terms of gold, this is like very, very much worth it due to the simple fact that uh, like there are objective bounties. They're TPing onto the Baron. Interesting. Um, they randomly find carrier, but we have owner, so in owner we trust, and then everything will be all right. In owner we trust. They old. Oh, they just press R onto us and we die. Interesting gameplay. Uh, he gets ulted over the wall. That's a very much cringe. And uh, yeah, they they still have not found owner. Oh no! No! <laughs> It's a horror! It's a horror! Oh god! It's a 3-0, isn't it? It's a 3-0, isn't it? It's like I don't even want to say it, like Hunger Life played like oh it's like obviously it's like oh the salty T1 fan uh that's like oh it's just draft. But uh yeah. I mean Peanut played really fucking well. Hunger Life, they were decently lucky uh with some of the like earlier plays. Zeka getting away multiple times with just a rough uh, amount of HP, which obviously snowballs hard in this game. Uh, and yeah, but, but the, yo, bro, can we agree at least that the draft is fucking horrendous dog shit? Like, oh, okay, wrong. Not the, like, how do, how do I say this? It's like, the champion order is already so bad that Hunger Life can just, like, like they literally could counterpick every lane. They first picked, uh, what was it, was it? They first pick Vi, I think, which is 
questionable. But I think they first picked Vi, and then like T1 just... Okay, this is our AD carry, this is our mid laner. What do you want? Okay, uh, here's by the way also our support. And then at least we all coped that we are counter picking top side. But no, he is actually our top laner as well. Do you want to counter pick him as well? And then, oh yeah, uh, let's just pick the most mysterious champion. The most key champion for our composition. A fucking R5 Lee Sin for owner. What the fuck is, what the fuck was that? Like idea of picking champions in such an order and then picking such champions as well, right? Like if you are at least, oh, we are super confident, we have champions that are super safe, that are hard to counter, whatever that might be, um, and we scale and the enemy can't do anything. At least if we did that, it's like, no, but we pick champions that are super reliant on getting ahead. They just pick safe champions in the lanes that they care about, right? Bot lane, nothing happens. Top lane, nothing happens. Sure, they might lose some CS, right? But Peanut can just permanently, like, keep watch around mid lane because it's the only lane where T1 has any avenue to like set up some plays. We have Braum support with Ash against a uh, Rakan Zix. Like there is nothing happening in bot lane. There's a uh, Vladimir in top lane. Nothing is happening. There is literally just one avenue for LeBlanc and Lee Sin to go. It's the most telegraphed game ever. And Hangwa Life, they all scale us. They just need to defend the very obvious thing that we want to do and it's GG. Okay, we can add to that that they had some smart lane assignments in the, I don't know, would you call it mid game? Well, maybe you would, right? And that's, that's, that's fine, right? They uh, netted uh, or they got more safety and more gold uh, or more positive gold allocation with their lane setups. Um, I don't even want to like, go down on them for their team fights. It's literally just press R. Sure, Peanut had some really good R angles, right? Getting multiple knockups, but that's about it. Anyway, let's go into game number two, three and four and hope that T1 can turn the series around because actually, I, I don't think the gameplay was all that bad. I think we were already just omega fucked from uh, like the moment we got into the game. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, game number two draft. Nasus is open. First pick Vi. Okay, we just copy their draft. Just right. Oh, let's see. Copy their homework. Let's see. They're just not going to pick. Uh, I don't know. Six Mauk. Oh, yeah, Mauka is banned. Uh, yeah. Say. Yeah, match picking. Uh, what is it? The jungle position with something. Right. Not revealing any more main match up. They're not doing the same stupid shit we just did. And they're picking, well, one of the strongest uh, thematic champions, right? Uh, right now. Sure, they can't combo uh, Zix ult with uh, Vi ult for like the ultimate one shot on any squishy. Nasus, yeah, it's just, like, just why not? It's like, is today just pick your champion day? Well, just Nasus Seraphine. What the fuck is this? We are just picking champions. We are got okay. We are getting like this is the this is the hardest 3-0 stomp I think coming in at us in the in the universe. I think uh, this is just just terrible. Like we don't even have to go into the game. It's already lost. It's already lost. It's actually already lost. What do we do? Like how? What? Like, we need to, like these last two picks, like need to be, I don't know what they need to be. We need an AD carry to at least have some damage. And we have to, uh, to get like whatever type of champion to set up something. I don't know. Like maybe like Bart ult and then just really cope that Bart ult hits the, the Zix and the Smolder. And then I have, I have no fucking clue. Smolder in itself is already like so giga broken. Uh, obviously, you can't blind pick him, right? Because the enemy actually could pick something like LeBlanc and then just actually attack you. Um, sure, hard to do in solo queue. 
uh, and solo queue uh, and pro play like harder than in solo queue um right we just saw that last game if you have an obvious game plan the enemy jungler can just perma stay mid and defend your ass nah nah what the hell is well actually olaf seraphine shen i like so I can't. Melee champions plus Seraphine go bro, I guess. I just We're just really picking some fucking fun comps that we want to pick. Game number one, hey, what do you want to play? Hey, pick it. Hey, what do you want to play? Hey, pick it. Actually everyone but carrier, I assume. And this one, it's like they have one of the like really reliable to top lane 2v2s, so that Joanni Renekton, you're like there's so much base damage, so much CC. It's just it it just works. Right? It's not crazy, it's not breaking your mind, it just works. They have Smolder mid lane versus Nasus. Newsflash, Smolder is an AD caster. Like, that fucking dragon doesn't really auto attack all that much comparatively. He just presses Q. Like, it's literally just I'm stacking and scaling, you are stacking and scaling, but your champion is from season, I don't know, 14, 25, whatever, and my champion is season 1. We are, like, it's just losing. Bot lane, they have Ziggs, we have Seraphine. One of these does damage in two towers in a lane swap meta, the other one doesn't. Uh, Shen support versus Leona support is actually not too bad, honestly. Uh, at least for the laning phase, if I remember that one correctly. But, like, does that actually matter? No, it does not. So, I, I'm just... T1 is cooking, yeah, it's just unedible. Anyway, T1 fighting, T1 fighting, let's just see. I mean, the top lane matchup is not bad. But what was jungle again, actually? What was jungle? Vi, sure. Uh, I mean, okay, let's cope. So mid lane is Omega lost. If they ever lane swap, the game is over for us. We have, like, we just lose. Uh, if we have standard lanes, owner and Zeus have to play like fucking gods. And like carrier TP is top lane as well, and we just have to hope that this Olaf gets like 20 kills at like 15 minutes, and then actually like we just don't care about Faker, he's just irrelevant, and we hope that Zeka is not scaled up and also irrelevant at that point. And I don't know, I just I think that's the only way. Like Zeus needs to be 20 kills and that's it i think that's that's the win condition everything else does not matter let's just see maybe i'm negative nancy but i just have no hopes for this like zero which is very sad i'm just like i'm coping 41 till the the last moment and uh yeah okay at least no no lane swap i think hangwa life sh uh should have been more uh, actively looking for lane swap here honestly sure they are also Oh, 79th unique pick? Whatever. Uh, let's just see. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Owners farming bot to top. Same as, as Peanut because both know that's the only lane that matters. Bot lane. No one is going to die again. Maybe trades go this or that. But that's that. Zeus pushes in, gets a cheetah recall, goes top again. Let's see if he actually walks or TPs. Okay, that's that. Faker not falling too far behind NCS, but uh, yeah. Again, we talked about it just like three seconds ago. The matchup uh, is literally so irrelevant. Uh, you're stacking less, your champion is worse. Uh, Faker cancels the recall, that's quite helpful. The light is in top side. And yeah, yeah, that forces on the flash. Great. That's exactly what we want to see. Now we have no topside pressure and let's just not hope that our Zeus is negatively impacted by that because that would be a disaster. Uh, carrier goes in into three people. Uh, will someone kill Peanut? Before he kills Hello, stop. Faker first blood, okay. That's not what we want to see. That was so messy, no. And Zeus just throw one axe at him. 
This is so bad. I mean, I, I mean, it's better than like any like case where we lose three people to Angua Life, obviously. But like Faker getting the kill is, I think, one of the worst things. I think even Carrier getting the kill could be better. Okay, so we actually deny the third grubber take. That's quite something. Um, maybe Vi can pick that one up. But uh, what the what the hell, Guma, Guma. Like, there's no way we actually... We, we are initiating the lane swap. While we... I just... Ah! You are... You are... Ah, what is the logic? What is the logic behind this? Please tell me. What is the logic behind this? I don't fucking care. Like, I don't care. What is the logic that our only win condition has to lane 1v2 now? You are... What the hell are you guys doing? Our carry is the top laner. Why are we swapping the top laner into a 1v2 situation? Well, they're strong... One of their strongest assets is having the Zix in a lane swap. Sure, owner... Uh, not owner. Zeus has ult here. But it just... Like, bro, it does not matter. Actually, Smolder gets the kill. Sure, he trades one for two. Uh, what? One... He gets a one for one kill while in a 1v3, 1v4 situation. But Smolder picks up the kill with the fucking long shot three pointer. Oh man, they use obviously two ults there, as far as I can tell. And like, yeah, this pick is nice, but it doesn't matter. It's a kill on Carrier, even if it's a kill on Vi, even if it's a kill on what's his name, uh, Guma's uh, the Seraphine, just doesn't matter. These are not our win conditions. Them having gold will not do too much of anything. It's better than nothing, but hello. It's like, who's damage in our comp? And we need damage. Damage is everything kind of in the game of League of Legends, right? It's Zeus, right? As, like, sure, you can argue for shields, but not shields against Smolder Zix damage. There's no shield big enough for that. Faker, did it connect even? I don't know, but uh, flash for flash. Faker, watch out. He gets flashed on, he gets the ult through, but he's just CC'd under turret. There's the Shen ult and just does not matter. But that's what I'm saying. The shields are irrelevant. Like they can be as big as my, but uh, it just doesn't matter. And uh, sure, like nice by Peanuts sticking around, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like this all is like, ah, actually it's going all right. Hey, we have Nasus who's stacking, but oh wait, what? He just presses E when Nasus press W, what? Viper presses W on our turret and it just dies, what? Zix gets free turret, uh, free first blood turret for free, what? We are we are losing so hard. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievably. Unbe I just can't even speak English anymore. I'm just so like it's so mind numbing how, how poor these drafts are. And then like sadly in this game the the gameplay is also shit. Okay, like Zeka TP's in and doesn't get anything. Uh, we get a plate in mid lane. Nice, that's what we want to see. Owner dropped the, the grubbers. Nice. Zeka, how many stacks? 120. Let's go. 10 stacks per minute for the smolder. But don't worry, guys. We have Nasus who's also scaling. Click on Faker, please, Observer. Not on Zix. And hey, he gets dove again. Oh, but we have Shen ult. What? How can it be that the Shen ult is not enough? Zeus, what? What? What did I miss? Was he too scared from carrier? What the hell? Come on, we need to dive this delight dude as well. We need to get something. Give the kill. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That does not matter. Absolutely does not matter. That's fine. Carrier gets the fast recall. Owner and Zeus get some gold. They are all our damage. If they don't have gold, we are just losing anyway. Um, 
and ooh, 140 stacks will be 150 shortly. Ah, they also have two tier stacking. So it's just, yeah, it's just amazing. We're like 14 minutes and we are behind in gold against Smolder Zix. Might sound shocking to you, but in case you have not noticed. What? Ragnarok is all already out? Like, Leona gets the kill. No! This is the saddest thing in my life. This game is not messy. This game is over. It's so fucked. It's so un... Like, the only win con is that we actually get the ultimate Omega Zack Zack, right? Zeus running in with Ghost Old, Owner Flash ulting, uh, and then Guma ulting on top of the each of them, Blade extending uh, the, what is it, Encore or something, and then Carrier has his ult on someone, and they actually don't get insta one shot, and then they go in, get some of the CC done from Guma, like Mary, maybe Carrier gets his taunt, and then we can actually like one shot, uh, at least, I mean, actually, it has to be the smolder, right? But uh, that's, I think that's the only win condition, right? We get that, then we get Baron, uh, or we get, I don't know. Yeah, we get Baron, and maybe then Zeus can, like, get three inhibitors with split push or something. Because, like, this team fight will, we will, like, at best, at best, we get it once, but it won't happen twice, like, it. They have too many tools to like space us correctly. They can just use range so much better. Like we have the advantage of Drakes, which like forces Hangwa Life at least somewhat to contest with us. But again, well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to put our thumbs together or fingers crossed or whatever you do in your culture and just hope the best for T1. There's the flash ult. The encore goes into nowhere. And I mean, we get the smolder, which is amazing, but the rest of the fight looks pretty rough. We lost Zeus for it, and our ults and cooldowns are all gone. Uh, Carrier? Does he have E? Well, not yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, without Zeus, we have no damage, we have nothing to contest. And our cooldowns also have been used. There's the TP from the smolder. So, uh, yeah, that's horrible. What? Who's that? That's Faker, okay. So we get mid lane turret. We trade one for one. Get a bunch of summoners. Right? Better, I think, better cooldowns gained, right? No flash now on Peanut. Who cares? No flash on Viper and smolder, right, Zekka? So, yeah. Yeah, this could have been better, like Guma's angle was not completely alright, so the uh, Encore was not extended properly. But it's tough to do, due to obviously they, they flash, you don't really know where they're ending up. Okay, Kenzius with W, does he have enough damage yet? Ah, uh, oh, 227 stacks, it's over. So at 20 minutes the game is just over, because the like hyper carry of the enemy team has, sc <laughs> has already scaled. Like imagine this. Like eight years ago or something, you st you say some to someone, oh yeah, uh, this like comp here is already uh, like finished um, because uh, like Kogma or whatever has like finished scaling at 20 minutes or something. Not not finished, but he's like already online at 20 minutes. It's like if you t said this to someone like 10 years ago, like they would lose their minds. Like what? There's a champion that does more damage than Kogma and he's already like ready to rumble at. What? 20 minutes? What? And like he has a actually safe laning phase and he has a dash and AoE wave clear ult? <laughs> ay ay ay. They get smolder zix. It's just unbelievable. And we are like, oh yeah, we scaled alongside with them. Okay, let's just do Baron. Okay, it's just like, hey. Why not? Why not? It's just hey. Let's just say, ready to lose your minds, bros. And okay, there's the combo. Uh, well, it's something like a combo. Oh, oh! He got 300 damage off before he insta got killed by the Zig Smolder, who have done 5,000 combined damage. 
this steam fight. This is like it's un it's so unplayable. It's literally just people sprinting and like doing a header into a fucking meat grinder into like whatever system of destruction you're envisioning. Look at this. Like Faker and Zeus obviously through tanking the Baron their resistances are even like more decreased. But running through this choke point through Zix bombs like having more fun with Zekka's ult that he can just directly line up with that corridor and then obviously the Q like bouncing AOE effect being able to be spread through your entire like uh, I don't know engage it is so it is just so fucking rough <sighs> okay let's just see Faker here on the flank flashes just just three Qs or something, make him half HP. Guma, yeah, it doesn't even get hit by the like centerpiece of the old, but it's just more than enough. We don't get the smite, so now it's two, two, two in the uh, in, in dragons. We're already like, ah man, this, I, I, I just don't even, I don't want to watch this anymore. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's literally like you looked at the draft. It, it like we didn't even see the full draft. And we were able to tell how this game was going. And it's literally happening. It's like T1 is trying their best. But what the... Like, I don't know, man. Just... I, I am so angry. I am so incredibly angry right now. It's like, look at this. He just gets melted. He just gets melted. Obviously he does. Because Guma can't even approach to get shields. Okay, he, now he got a lucky... Oh, actually got the auto through. Oh my god, don't tell me. By uh, Uga Booga, we just win. There is no way that just happened. There is no way Je Zeka would flash up, just ate all of Guma combo and just died. There's no way Guma actually does that much damage. I mean, actually, like, Zeus got some damage done to, to him. It's going to be a 50-50. Carrier gets the taunt, but it's too early. Uh, we're waiting for a second taunt. Wait, Peanut goes over the wall. Wait, that's actually owner, by the way. And now we are 50-50ing against... But small... Wait, Smolder is coming! No, 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 no! Okay. The uh, plus three, whatever, is strong enough. I just, I just hate everything about this. Yesterday, right, it was fun, but the drafts were also shit. But at least, well, at least there was some thought, be thought behind it, but, like, Zix was just game-breaking, because, like, uh, Genji is so good at utilizing it. Actually, that's just a different word for saying they just lane-swap KW. Um, and obviously, they had the Garen counterpick for Nasus prepared. But let's just see, okay, there's... Zeka, he just gets like a bit of damage. And then he, oh, he gets auto attacked by Baron. Baron is doing it. And then he randomly just gets hit by a Guma. Baron did everything. Baron, he's our Nibba, yeah? You know what they say. And then Faker just cues it. How many stacks? 477. This game is, uh, it's just so stupid. Like these drafts. Again, yesterday, hey, just leave Zix open. Today, hey, just leave Zix open. Right? Zix is one of the big problems. Obviously, the rest. Uh, there's also Smolder, who, again, I think is just not all right. It's like, especially in pro play, a champion with a kit like Smolder. It's like, it's like, oh, no, we can't have Corky. Uh, we can't have Azir. Uh, Rise is uh, it's too strong. Uh, it's like, and then there's a champion with literally AoE, true damage, ranged, and dashes. Uh, that's just flying around. Uh, but, but he has to escape, bro. He's like he has his uh, Q passive, whatever. No, it's actually his passive, whatever. Uh, scaled up at 20 minutes. It's like there's no like downside to picking this champion, uh, especially in the current meta. But whatever. Okay, let's just see. Uh, we get the turret, we get some gold, but uh, again, uh, let's not be f like f I don't know deceived. It actually does not matter. Uh, we can have all the gold in the world. Uh, it does not matter because the enemy team also has all the gold in the world, right? They have a Zix with three items who has anti-healing. 
they have Smolder with three items who is fully stacked up and they have two Hextech Drakes. And they also have some other champions who have CC and some HP bars, right? So it uh, doesn't matter. Um, or it's just additional pain. So yeah, let's not be confused. We are still so far away from anything, right? At this game, there will be never a point where we are in a fine position. Like it just it doesn't exist anymore. Obviously, I guess the map state in terms of like waves and towers, like can at some point be favorable, right? Uh, this is something that we could have played around, but the enemy team actually has like shit ton of engage, so we can't even have uh, what's his name, Zeus in the uh, in the side lane do whatever he wants, right? That just doesn't exist. Mmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Did you see that one fucking Q did like what 300, 400 damage? Come on, no, he fucks up another 50-50. Oh no, why? Please. Okay, owners like saving the 50-50 smites uh, for, for worlds or something. I don't know. They have three drag hex decks with smolder six. <laughs> Maybe our opponents are just too smart. But uh, I don't know. When like random 700 subscriber Andy uh, can tell you that the draft is shit after like R1, R2 then uh, I don't know maybe either I am stupid and I'm just wrong and the reality that we are seeing here is just a lie yeah this is just evil this is just evil they have the better comp they already would win all the team fights and now they also use their CC to generate picks what the fuck that's unfair it's like can't you at least like let us die in 5v5s before you like get picks? That's just cringe. Yeah. That's it. That is so bad, man. They outscale us. They have better team fight. They have more range. They have like uh how how do I how is it called again? Non-committal engage, right? Leona old peanut old. At like sure, it's like yeah, look at the wards, they don't exist. Guma is out of position. Fair. But, uh, yeah. Unfair. Eh. Yeah, sure. This is next level. But, I mean, the game is, has been over for 13 minutes. Uh, 23 minutes. Well, actually, like, 13 minutes was the moment Zeka was scaled up, which was absolutely GG. Obviously, it's over for 34 minutes because we loaded into the game with these champions. Um... They are trolling here because they think they dive in Olaf without Viper or Zeka around. Um, and then they just use their dashes, which they have on their uh, long range hyper carries, right? Again, remember. Okay, he gets a flash in, but where's the damage? Actually, it's not on this game yet. Like, again, like, imagine a fucking. Like, Kogma had a dash and people would lose their mind, but there he is, Smolder. And he does more than <laughs> it's just so fucking silly it's just absolutely insane he does more damage scales faster stronger has a dash uh, it's like how is this champion legal and how do we like the champion is legal that's already like a state right like right games what the fuck is your game but it's like how is this legal and we are not picking or banning it only mercy is stopping them from ending uh, the game right they can just like sit next to the bot bot wave and uh do our nexus turrets but they want to don't risk anything stupid and as such they are playing this very stock standardly which is just crushing right this is a game where well we are lost since 38 minutes right it's there only again i said it if zeus gets 10-0 20-0 in the first 15 minutes uh, we can snowball this game and win. Yes, but the moment that didn't happen the game was lost and Well officially it was lost at the 20th minute when Smolder reached 225 stacks Right and now it's just like uh, Like first of all obviously Hangwa Life doesn't want to risk stupid shit But they like in a series. It's like a strategy that teams talk about at times um, If you're in a winning situation and so on to keep that as long as possible to like mind crush the enemy right to like tilt them to like despair them and so on and so on 
Look at them. We are not doing any damage. Peanut even lives. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, but yeah. Look at this. This is our mid laner and AD carry. Versus support Leona. And we are losing. Okay, Delight at least dies. But yeah. I mean, thank fucking God this game is over. Uh... We only have to play one more game in this series because there's no way they're not giga tilted and it's all. It's disgusting. It's so disgusting. Good thing I didn't wake up early for this. Jesus Christ. Okay, next draft. T1, look at their bands. We have not banned Smolder, we have not banned Six. We're picking Six, at least that's an upgrade. Already better than DK. DK has no chance. We have picked Six actually. But I mean, we're still going to lose. They're too, like, they're probably too tilted right now. Understandably so. Getting fucking sabotaged by their coaching staff into, like, two absolutely disgusting drafts. That, uh, whatever. Let's just see. They pick Vi, okay. Oh my god. Oh, actually, Zix was not elected. Uh, Smolder was not elected. Oh my god, if we pick Smolder now and lose with Smolder or Zix, then I just hate my life. Kaiser, I don't like. Yeah, good pick, good pick, good pick. Yes, yes. No! We are picking good champions and we're still going to lose, right? We're still going to lose. I, I have no trust in the reverse sweep. No, no, no. Not after game 1-2. I have no trust anymore. I have trust against DK, but not today anymore. There is no way we pick good champions and are actually going to lose. No, this is even worse. If we inter draft three games in a row and just got 3-0, then it'd be like, ah, we can't say, haha, they, they can't play uh, with uh, bad champions, haha. But once G1 gets a good draft, we will win. At least that's what we as fans can cope with. But now they're actually playing decent champions. Obviously, Yone is... A bit more dangerous than a Nasus mid lane, right? Um, there's the reason Sure Smolder is absolutely giga broken, but you can still kill that guy in the first like 20 minutes, right? And now look at this, they have already drafted some sort of wombo combo engage, which um, is kind of the hard counter to like Smolder Ziggs, right? Either you even outrange them, which is very hard to do. Um, Right, and the champions are not viable. Or you go Ultra Omega Zack Zack, right? Rel. Uh, Rel Kaiser already, stack like Rel goes in, procs the plasma stacks, Kaiser goes in, you already have the burst, right? Same with uh, the Vi. And then, I mean, we don't have to talk about Yon, right? So much damage. Alistair here is a fine option, right? We need peel, we need peel, we need to protect our uh, hyper carries there. Um, uh, so I think that's, I think that's correct. Uh, because like no shielding support can like shield enough for this, right? You could cope and say Soraka because Soraka has obviously the AOE silence, which is pretty good. Uh, Camille, Camille, I don't know about this one. Hmm. Like, obviously, sure, Camille can, like, mimic the Vi, right? And then you can Camille ult, uh, Zix ult. You also have, like, the side lane option. And, like, if Camille ults Yon, for example, then Yon can't uh, go onto your backline. So that's something. And maybe we actually just lose 3-1. Because this draft is actually not bad. Hangwa Life's draft is playable. Hangwa Life, if they get ahead in the first 20 minutes they can just snowball crush our skulls um right top lane is the swing matchup uh, peanut has been playing phenomenally sure owner didn't have too much to work with honestly he tried his best in the lee sin game but honestly his kicks were kind of cringe at times so uh like we are getting like jungle diffed in that regard top lane has been irrelevant honestly zeus again tried his best but you get swapped on as a carry top laner, right? It's not a carry top laner meta, far from it. As a carry top laner and pro play, you are absolutely cooked. So that's what it is, right? And bot lane, honestly, wasn't 
not relevant because enemy AD carry had Ziggs and there's no laning, right? It's just a super inactive meta right now. It's so cringe. Just pick stupid stuff, swap, delete waves, and then one team has like a better scaling comp with uh, with Zix, and the other one does not have Zix plus like scaling AD carry or scaling other champion. And that's in the end often the result. <sighs> Regardless, let's just see. It's like... Bot lane should be okay. Mid lane is the mid lane and top lane is like owner like can never look into bot side. Carrier should not be next to Guma at all. Sure, this puts him into a bit of a risky situation, right? Because the light and viper can dive, um, like it can work out, especially like early on before Guma is like level nine or has his like. A lost chapter right where he can like either spam or has enough ap and mana to uh constant to constantly delete waves uh we're looking for a swap angle you are not serious like shh. actually actually i just noticed we picked a carry top laner with six ourselves we are again stupid no 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 oh. owner smart so he got the camp and he got level 2, so that's okay. Carrier here around mid lane, trying to not soak too much XP. We're now like in the... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, more like older school lane swap, right? That we saw at the... Not at the beginning, but like during the middle and like end of the regular split. Where we have like two people top lane and then the supports uh, uh, like standing around uh, in river. Uh, or like around mid lane river. Um, but again, this is... Sure, this gives the... Uh, what is it? The top laners, they don't get farm, but they get... Uh, what is it? <laughs> Shit. Uh, they get XP, so that's the good thing. But there are two issues here. First, we have a carry top laner. Sure, they also have one, right? But we are the ones initiating the swap. What does it also mean if you are the one initiating the swap? You are swapping away from bot lane. And now look at the turret HP and look at the other turret HP. Now, why could that be? We could talk about the champions, but actually in this case, that doesn't really matter. I think everyone knows about like how it's not bone plating. It's I think it's called bulwark, like turret passives, right? Bot lane turrets are squishier for the first 10 minutes or so than mid lane and top lane turrets. Right? So swapping away from bot lane means that you aren't dealing damage to top lane turret because tur like top lane and mid lane turret are invincible for the first like in the early game. Because they don't want swapping. It's it's we lost four turret plates from a swap that we initiated. This is ah, This is such Basic, like it's literally game knowledge. You open fucking leak Wikipedia or whatever, and it's right there. You go into a practice tool game, you click at the turret, you read the turret passive, it's right there. How do you initiate a lane swap? First of all, with with your top lane carry Camille. Uh, well, ag again, actually, it's not that bad, right? It's because like the early levels in this matchup are very much like Jack's favorite. As so often, Jack's E level 1, 2, you know how it goes. So it's not that terrible from that perspective. I'm just raging. But why are we swapping away from our bot lane turret so early on? I don't know. I just don't know. It's like Zeus is actually like doing better than Doran and like the series, but it just does not matter. Owners coming around, meeting Peanut. And okay, Peanut gets the first one with the smite. Emil first rotation, but somehow, oh, Viper has also elected TP. Very smart, by the way. Uh, there is Smolder ult. Okay, and Zeus flashes away. Will not die to the ignite. First blood on Guma. Doran, watch out, Zeus. Nah, uh, uh, actually, Delight got the kill. Let's go. Faker picks up a stack. Okay, good. No, actually, I mean, honestly, we should not take these fights. They are absolutely bad for us, right? If we take fights early on, that's the only way we lose this game. If we fall behind 
uh, early, and then Hunger Life can like s snowball on our faces without uh, us being what scaled up. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, Zeus, run, run, and then he's like, oh yeah, let me recall here. Ah yeah, yeah, man, such a degenerate. Just go back to the turret; it's right there. Uh, but whatever. Let's see. Ships in the darkness. Oh, come on, no. Not again. And this peanut guy is so good. He again is behind us, right there in the tribe brush. But I guess both are like ships in the dark. Right? Now Zeus should know. Uh, I have no fucking clue what happened there. That was beyond silly. Like the moment this Doran guy just straight up runs at you, you should know that there's something up. So he he goes away. Like the only area where Peanut could have been was the tri brush. No, we're still ahead in gold, which is actually like phenomenal. Uh, again, considering that uh, our comp is this and that. Sure, if the top lane matchup gets too out of hand, uh, it could be scary for that. Sure, we have some engage, right? Um, but uh, yeah, we don't really, our champions are not that great in just forward movement, right? Um, we want to stand our ground or kite backwards. Uh, it's like, I, I don't know, man. This game is unlosable, actually. Like, oh god, I just did the, uh, the K drill. It's unlosable, and now I jinxed it, right? I, I, I did, I, I jinxed it. Actually, what are the... Stop, stop! We are not the... No, 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 no... It does not matter. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, this is all on me. This is all on me because I said it's not losable. Faker loses vision and dies. Okay, yeah, no, I just... Why? 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 We are not the LeBlanc Olaf comps anymore. We are Zig Smolder. Don't do anything stupid and you win. Why are we looking to dive Zekka in the side lane? What are we doing? And like sure, this fight again could have been much better, right? Faker gets peanut here uh, or Zekka dies there or there. Sure. I don't fucking care. Even if we like get kills, it's about the intent, and the intent is I don't want to get banned. Uh, let's just stop. But it's beyond, beyond silly. I just nah, man. It's like, how, like how? How is this? This is all something I never get in League of Legends with pro play. Like the game is not. We're not in season one or something. This is some basic shit. This is like, you go into silver elo and like these people will know, oh, I picked scaling, I am not forcing fights. Especially not against champions who are like stronger than me early and in the mid game. This unfortunate uh, timing there by, by owner. I don't think Viper knew that he was coming. Uh, regardless, everyone knows that. We scale, why should we do anything? This is exactly what uh, LS got the flag for, by the way. Uh, with his like recent Twitter X whatever shenanigans. I'm again not too deep into social media I just call it but uh, it's like the idea of not doing anything and winning by doing so right like sure in like we can fight them and if we win we are winning harder but if we don't do anything we are also winning did we, like did we not just look at the last game especially the last game Hangwa Life, like the only reason why this game was dragged out was first because Hangwa Life wanted to be like safe, second because they want to inflict mental damage to us, and third because they took stupid fights at times which gave us Baron, which stalled the game out. Uh, it didn't, would, it would never result in us winning, but it stalled the game out, right? Because in the end they still need waves to destroy our turrets, right? So. If they didn't do anything, they would have won faster, right? The only reason why the game stalled out was the three reasons I mentioned, with one of them being absolutely silly. It's like, why are we fighting with scaling comp? This is the oldest, like one of the oldest concepts 
in this game, like in this game and in other games as well, there are other, uh, like all kinds of other games, right? It's like you're not taking, like if you are a fucking Pokemon trainer and you are, I don't know, you caught a, I don't know English Pokemon names, fuck. Is it still, oh shit, I don't know English Pokemon names, shit. Okay, I just googled for my Pokemon reference. If you are a Pokemon trainer and you have a Magikarp on your roster, right? And you know, hey, I just have to wait till level 20 and then it's going to become a big fearsome Gyarados. Is that how you pronounce it? I hope so. And then I just win because I don't know, Gyarados is strong or something, right? Then you are not looking to go into fights with your Caprador, <laughs> with your Magikarp uh before it has reached level 20 and for this comp it's the same you're not looking to fight with your smolder before he has reached level not level st uh, 225 stacks why are we forcing fights before then it's it's such a basic concept that transcends games that if you have whatever let's just see uh yeah faker and side lane here struggling no we gotta fight Actually, let's go top lane. Let's have a fucking three-man dive on this, uh, what's his name? And then we're pushing turrets without Zix there, right? This is so, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I just, I'm not getting it. Sure, here in this case, again, it works out because our champions are fucking busted. We have Zix in mid lane. He just presses WQ and the turret uh, and, the, and the wave is gone. And we use our TP uh, to cheat numbers advantage anyway. Uh, right? But I mean, it's not the worst macro play, but, uh... But, nah, mm, yeah, maybe I should have paid more attention to the setup of it. But, uh... uh it, it, again, it worked out. Maybe, like, maybe not everything is wrong. Again, I'm just... I'm a bit blind by rage and disappointment right now. So maybe I'm calling, I don't know, chickens eggs and eggs chickens or whatever. Uh, but yeah. Luckily for us, the Drake, it's it's not even too bad or too good, right? Giving them movement speed, uh, yeah, it's not going to be helpful for us. Uh, well, again, it could have been it could have been much worse. They could have gotten Mountain Soul or something like that. We have to be careful, man. The Rel in our ass is uh, it's a big threat, and I mean, the Light is known for like finding some crazy engages. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, we spotted the rel. What the hell? Oh god. But yeah. Okay, we got the rel. We get the rel. Fine, fine. They're not focusing on the drags. Flash our viper locked up. But oh, where's the follow up? Faker all the way in mid lane, opening up our. Yeah, it's so cursed. It's so cursed. We don't even know how to play our comp. Why are we looking for? I mean. I agree with Zeus that the angle looked good, but the moment you get the flash, you have to just run because you're dragging the Sejuani and the, um, what is it? The uh, Alistar, you're dragging them with you because they are also now, ooh, engage focused. And here's your Zix and you, okay, we, we're not seeing it. Ah, oh, man, I should get this epic pen thing uh, again so I can highlight what I'm talking about. But look, where Faker and Guma are, right? Look where they are. They have to position carefully, right? And they're also ranged champions. They don't want to be in the thick of things, but they're being dragged forward in this open space where their front line has moved away from them. So like normally you have Zix and uh, our backline here and our front line here. Our front line follows the flash engaged by Zeus and follows Viper's flash, right? So they move away and here open space is being opened, right? Our phalanx, whatever is being dragged uh, or stretched right like a rubber band uh okay nice pick nice um we also pick mid lane turret up with objective bounty we don't get the smite actually we don't get the mid lane turret yet we're looking for another fight which actually does not look too bad because we're playing the fights i just fucking there is no way man faker why why didn't you just flash that I mean, now there are multiple bad things coming around. Like, Faker not flashing that is just instantly fight losing because, like, he is most of our DPS and him getting clipped by Zekka's ult there, even though it was just, uh, like, a, a, a tiny edge thing, uh, that was just, it's just too much. 
but also obviously like they are unreasonably strong right there should not be this they should not be uh, they shouldn't have this much gold because we shouldn't have like fought with them so much in the early game uh yeah i'll talk about the phalanx bullshit uh just in a couple of moments oh actually faker cc changed because he just gets clipped by i think it was the lights q or something oh come on that was a uh, like a uh, an like really just an edge thing right first cc hits faker then he gets hit uh then he can't flash then peanuts q i think maybe also hit him and then obviously lastly zekka's ult comes around that was you can't say Ooh, super well done you can't say oh fuck unfortunate but uh yeah, whatever uh, but in this fight you saw it right with our front line right in front right get it front line in front of our back line uh they were able to hold away the engage of hunger life at least for uh, for a moment and then it just really took a slight edge to pierce faker who was uh again a bit too forward not using his flash respectfully uh again we can debate that one um to cause us to lose but also again them having way more resources than they should have due to the simple fact that hey what the fuck why did we fight uh, like this game like should never have like 615 like there should never be 21 kills at 24 minutes and now because we didn't take care of the mid lane turret uh when it was free uh now we have to lose two members or at least one member for it uh nice Zeus picks up another objective bounty yeah uh, this is just right we didn't pick up the free mid lane turret uh to, but we wanted to force the fight in uh in the what is it in the in the junk not jungle in the in the area of the dragon it's like it's unbelievable that we're losing with this uh, with this draft it's like this is one of the like besides top lane sure alistair is not like a z tier champion but alistair is like an all right build support who obviously is like good into rel uh we have one of the better junglers i think uh sejuani in my mind is one like her kit is just amazing for jungle uh hers dragas and uh, maokai i think have one of the best kits for junglers uh maokai simply because of well, he doesn't have a standard dash which is usually pretty good uh but yes obviously his ultimate is broken his saplings are really nice and his wq are all right uh regardless like we have one of the like best kit junglers right if they're ever like in the meta they're going to see play um we have a like peel support nice we have the best scaling champion in the game smolder we have one uh, champion that is really good in lane swap meta, Zix, that also has like a long range AP poke uh, and like space control, like all things good, right? That get like that normally would guarantee scaling to be achieved. Or top lane pick, I don't agree with it, but like, hey, okay. I can see the angle of like, okay, Zeus ults in and um, like, then we get the alley of Guma's bomb on top of it. I can see that. But, uh, yeah, that's the only, like, manko. And it actually it costs us big because it makes top lane volatile. If that was a Cassante or something, actually, what is Guma doing? Like, Guma getting caught so often in the series. Like, it's crazy. And, uh, yeah, this is actually the moment where they are going to end the game here, I feel like. A figure is going to die, and sure, Viper dead, but doesn't really matter Zeus has nothing left in the tank actually E comes back up but doesn't matter and uh, yeah that's how we lose the series they're going to finish the game now and uh, yeah there's I, I guess the positive angle is we're not the best team we're not perfect and we can still improve I, I don't know that's the most shallow positivity I can say um, we pick Omega actually they're not finishing no we have to suffer more because I, 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 at this point, I don't think they know what they're doing anymore. I think either they're tilted or I, I just, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, this is all irrelevant right there. They have absolute every advantage right there. 12k ahead. Their champions, like, sure, we scale better, but their scaling is not terrible. And if you give them 12,000 gold lead and, uh, like, soul and everything, and vision control, map control, then like sure they they will win it's like here now they uh, just peel up baron pick for look for a fight 
And uh, here again, we see like how in theory we can peel, uh, right? Like in theory, this would not be as terrible, but they just press their buttons and we die because the numbers are just too big. We've not been able to scale up nicely. And uh, yeah, <sighs> I mean, Hangwa Life, like, props to them. Their drafts were good, not like mind numbing, like, oh, what an insane counter pick. But their drafts were solid, their gameplay was solid. Sure, maybe a bit sloppy right in the first two games where they had the option or the... Uh, where they were in the role of not doing anything and they still fought with us here and there. Um, well, actually, game number one, they just had to camp mid lane and hope that Zeka doesn't go 0-10 and then they win. Uh, whatever. So we're going to see Hangwa Life against Genji again. That's going to be interesting. Um, Genji is really good at drafting Hangwa Life. Looks to be like at least solid at drafting, if not good actually. Um, the gameplay a bit messy. I don't think. Well, they got uh, shit stomped by Genji in the regular split. Peanut absolute MVP today. Like he had a perfect read on what to do uh, in, in most times in the game. Set up his teammates for like success. Brought them extra gold when they needed or wanted it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Faker looked okay, but like honestly. Uh, what were these drafts like blind picking LeBlanc the thing is like as much as I always it's like okay we can we don't have to blame our players we can blame this whatever like Tom the coaching staff right with for these bad drafts the reality is uh, that's not how drafting works right the reality is uh, the players also have a say in it and like you can't tell me that Faker like has nothing to do and here again we see it like our front line is being pulled so far and it opens up this middle space, right? Now, like, there's no one in between Peanut, um, let's just say Peanut, Peanut and Guma, right? There's no one in between. He just can regularly punch him in the face. And here again, and here it's actually kind of better, but yeah, it's just one tiny thing hits Faker and then he's CC chained to death. Can't even flash anymore. Uh, should have, like, obviously flashed the first instant, but uh, yeah, that's just looking at the details of this fight which well sure we can be superficial and say oh yeah just flash five fat uh but uh yeah it's like here again it's like if we would be scaled up doran's already dead like or well, he has to zone us much earlier and yeah actually we wouldn't even be in such a situation to be honest right uh that's i guess the next level of thought draft number one the pick order was absolutely horrendous it's like playing uh, poker with open cards there's no way you can win if the opponent is not fucking like stupid and like hunger life is clearly not stupid game number two it's like what the hell was that we give them literally the exodia champions and try our best but it just doesn't work game number three we get the like in my eyes like some of the best champions in the game and we even fail then uh this is just yeah i it's I don't feel good about T1 right now. Uh, I just we just have to hope they at least beat DK, and I think then from a points perspective they could be guaranteed worlds because we have more points than Hangwa Life from Spring. Right, obviously we have uh, the most points besides Genji, and if Genji makes worlds directly, I think then I think we ah uh, whatever it doesn't matter. We we'll take a look at that when it matters. Hope you had some fun seeing me suffer. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have like a different perspective. Maybe I'm like too f focused on like some aspect and I'm blind to to the truth. Uh, then let me know. Please enlighten me. But I just please enlighten T1 at, in the first place. It's like what the fuck is this? <sighs> we see each other soon. Take care. Bye bye, my friends.